Welcome to Most Life, where we have weekly Mo Chats. Our Ahead of the Curve series is someone who's changing the world in their way, bringing new ideas, fresh perspective, and inspiration to you. We will bring new faces, fun chats, interesting ideas, the Most Life system here for you each week at Mo Chats. Welcome to My Most Life TV. Today we are featuring author and fellow breast cancer survivor, Dewana Sykes. She is the author of Cancer Us. It's a poignant, I think it said on the back, poignant, uh, which in just reading uh, some of it myself, it is open, it is raw, it is all out there. Um, Dewana Sykes and I shared the stage as flag bearers at last year's three-day 60-mile walk in Tampa. And uh, Duana, welcome to My Most Life TV and to our Ahead of the Curve featured series. We're thrilled to have you. Welcome. Thank you, and I'm, I'm glad to be here today. So um, we met, like I said, at the 60-mile uh, walk, and that was a pretty treacherous physical undertaking. Uh, this week we're featuring our, featuring our theme of speaking and speaking up. Um, I know for both of us, being on the stage and being flag bearers meant a lot as survivors. Tell me a little bit about that experience for you. That experience truly um, was a once-in-a-lifetime experience to to just be able to really represent the group um, of, of not only uh, just the walkers but the survivors, um, to be able to just kind of really embrace that moment um, and just feel um, special and and just really know that you're representing a group of women who like not only have survived you know this this dreaded disease but are now out here and actually uh, taking a stand for this cause by like you said walking in a very brutal walk and um, you know it also involves the raising of the money that um, goes toward treatment and toward research. So it just a, was a wonderful and very rewarding experience. Great, I agree with you. Um, and it was um, it was a daunting task. I had my uh, sisters and my partner and my sister-in-law there, and um, it really it really was a, a life event. That was my five-year survival mark. Um, I know in, in in talking with you about your book and in uh, the fact that you actually what the topic is of your book, how has speaking up and representing yourself impacted your survival? Uh, speaking up has it has been um, a tremendous and integral part of of my survival. Uh, I kind of highlight this in one of the chapters in the book, which is entitled "What Is Your Support System." Um, I know that a lot of times when people go through uh, events like the cancer diagnosis, um, the the thought sometimes is there to kind of conceal, and you know people can kind of see your body going through changes, uh, seeing things kind of happen, but people still choose um, to to conceal. I found for me, uh, really, I mean, I think I told everybody I knew, almost like I had a new pair of shoes. Um, and for me, it really made the difference in the support system that I had. I mean, um, I talk about the fact that I didn't overburden one person by um, putting so much on them. And I think that's one thing you would do if you limit, you know, your, your speaking voice in terms of telling others. Um, I really had more support than I could, could handle, if that makes sense, which is awesome place to be. <laughs> And I really would attribute that to speaking up about it and letting others know um, that I was going through something like breast cancer. You know, that's interesting that you mentioned that. Um, I had kind of forgotten um, when I was going through it myself. I, I kind of like you, um, maybe because, I don't know if you're naturally an extrovert, but um, I've been tested and I am naturally an extrovert, if you can believe that. Um, it felt um, healthier for me to talk about it and to let people know what I was going through. I have met several women who had difficulty um, expressing themselves or friends of friends who um, were diagnosed with breast cancer and I was more than happy to be a shoulder for them, be a sounding board and they for one reason or another chose not to reach out to me. Um, so I do think that 
there's a natural tendency for, for a lot of women to conceal and to retreat. Um, I think it's a human instinct to retreat when we are under attack. Um, but I think that in not only expressing it to our loved ones, but I think just letting other people know uh, what's going on. I, I do remember this interview is really about you, so just pardon my digression for a minute because this is an important topic for both of us. Yes. But when I was diagnosed, I told all of my team members at work, and um, I remember the uh, not only the humility I felt, but also the power of um, of talking to them about what I was going through, and um, and receiving their their love and support um, at a time when I was their boss, um, but the most vulnerable I've ever been in my life. And yeah. um, and it's 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 a difficult position for a lot of people to be in, um, but it was very empowering. And uh, and 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 your message and your book um, to me kind of reminds me of the power of speaking and representing yourself. And then you'll take us to the next level of of some of the stuff that's that's in your book. Um, so give us kind of the the juice that's in there and what you really are trying to. Um, communicate in your book cancer us okay so and I want to tell you that um, uh, you say you digress but I would like to say that you did exactly what what I I feel called to do which is to just evoke that type of um, remembrance and that type of passion and that type of of, um, of inspiration in others and particularly as you said in the book um, it's really a neat um, project. It's um, how it can, how it was able, how I was able to pull it together. Where I really do highlight, you know, a lot of the the major features of my cancer journey, my actual breast cancer journey. But woven into that is this concept that in every area of our life, we run the risk of of having toxicities, uh, much like the the cancer you know, getting clear on what's going on in your body and really understanding that that same um, process can happen even with us in groups, whether it's in groups of family, work groups, um, relationships, um, any area where you come together as an organized group, a cell group, so to speak, um, the potential lies for a, a cancerous condition that, you know, if not treated, can be totally destructive for what that group was even um, organized for. Can we just like sigh after you say that? Um, the the power of, of of what you just said and the um, uh, what can I say? <laughs> I mean, yeah. And you know, I think many breast cancer survivors. Uh, speaking of a voice of one individually, obviously. Um, probably go inside at some point and say what toxicity, what brought me to this point and what do I need to, uh, to, to clean up. Um, and as we heal, um, sometimes it takes a while to do that, but as we heal, um, Gosh, I got to think that that everyone who's gone through at least breast cancer, which is my personal experience, uh, maybe there's other cancers as well that this would evoke um, that reflection. Um, do you feel comfortable sharing uh, part of your story that's in your book? Oh, sure. So um, I'll tell you, this really came about the first time I was actually ever asked to speak um, about my cancer journey. You know, I kind of went through this this analysis where I said, you know, anybody can get before the mic and say I've survived. If they're, if there's breath in their body and they're talking, they're a survivor. So what value can I add to this this time, this moment that I'm going to have? What What is it that you want from this? And I just got this revelation, I mean, about what was going on inside of my body. What's happening? What was happening? And then it was as if uh, God really talked, spoke to me and said, um, you've, you've had it before. You've had cancer before. And so I started looking at other areas of my life where um, I had allowed things to kind of act abnormal and sort of the destruction that um, 
I experienced because of that. And the two areas that I highlight uh, within the book are the area of relationships and the area of bitterness um, in the workplace. Um, and then research has even shown that bitterness um, itself, if carried over a long period of time, um, breeds disease and other health conditions. And so, again, I realized that I've ha I had things going on prior to, you know, the breast cancer uh, diagnosis. And, and so those are the things that I really open up about in the book, some of the relationships and some of the experiences in the workplace. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just... You, you've kind of gotten me a little bit speechless, Duana. I mean, I, I, I know what your book's about, and I know what you're about, and um, we've got all these prepared questions, and um, what, you're, what you're talking about is um, hitting me right, right in the middle here. Um, well, let's go with it. Let's, 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 you know, like you said, <laughs> we've got prepared stuff going on, but that's what, that's, that's, that's yes. the intent. That's right. What and, and, and you know, and I, I've created most life um, in an effort to have people uh, begin a journey um, that would be move a direction away from those things that you're speaking about. I do think that there are a lot of struggles and um, some dispassionate organizational dynamics that do happen um, in the workplace. And um, speaking up is actually um, one of those things that I think is important. Um, uh, but sometimes people are not empowered to do so and feel a great threat about speaking up. And I think um, companies have the um, obligation, I believe, to encourage uh, employees and staff and team members, executives, leaders, etc., uh, to speak up. I think we're seeing we've seen a shift. I think in, in at least in corporate America, mm -hmm. where um, transparency and openness and integrity. Are, are becoming higher and higher uh, values to be quantified, to be measured. Um, so hopefully um, those types of environments that breed disease, both in the organization, as you said, and also in the individual, um, might be moving in, the, in a positive direction. Um, and, and let me just say that uh, my past life, uh, I certainly... Uh, felt in like I was in those types of situations. Um, I was often in a managerial or leadership position, and hopefully, um, people who know me and who might see this might um, acknowledge that um, I try to move my teams more in a spirit of empowerment and engagement. Um, but um, we all have to be uh, aware and 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 think about what our experience is, because if you don't have the reflection you don't actually know what the experience is that you're in. You just suffer through it until it becomes a breaking point. Yes. I totally agree. And, I, um, you know, what I have found is, and I know the economy and um, just, you know, bit companies, you know, everybody's kind of chomping at the bit, for lack of a better term, to, you know, be number one and, and we kind of think that those decisions that get us to that place are um, simply, you know, money-based decisions. And I think that companies who have really recognized and embraced long-staying success, not just because of the power of their brand, they realize that a lot of those decisions have to be passion-based. And um, I'm really you know, hoping to uh, really make an impact in that area. According to statistics, uh, less than 30% of the people are fulfilled in their workplace. And um, I, I think, like you said, that maybe people are recognizing that that's where the real profits lie. That's one of the things that I enjoy talking about is, you know, as we look to continue to look to the bottom line and see where we can cut costs, I think we've got to understand that diversity and passion in that people uh, is where that dollar lies. So, I think there's another um, statistic that I'm not um, off the top of my head uh, confident in the exact numbers, but um, women-led businesses actually are more profitable. Um, and I, I think I've read that um, in several places. And 
I'll, I'll probably be doing something about that in the future on mymostlife.com. Um, not because of its of it being women specifically, but I think as as we evolve, humanity evolves. Um, the, some of the characteristics of maternity and caretaking that women bring to the workplace naturally um, are are positive and do engender some of that. Um, I'm not suggesting that women can't be toxic in the workplace at all, but what I'm saying is that in a, in a general sense, um, some of the skill sets of caretaking and nurturing and, 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 and bringing passion uh, are some of the things that, that women typically have more genetically um, uh, intuitive sense for. Um, I, and I know a lot of men who have adopted that and who uh, bring that to their game as well. Uh, but it's more natural in the females uh, to do that. Um, however, um, I do want to kind of talk a little bit about uh, more of your experience and and maybe some of your journey of how you moved away from uh, the bitterness and the toxicity of some things that were affecting you and and what your journey uh, to release yourself from that was was like. So if you could share some of that with us. Okay. Um, for me, um, in a in a, a well in the in the greatest sense, there's a kind of a couple of different things that I, I did or I've done or continue to do. Uh, I, I mentioned in my book that healing is an, a continuous process. Uh, we know, you know, when you look at just cancer, breast cancer, uh, other cancers, that there's a potential for recurrence or relapse. Um, you know, we, we never want to think about that, but it, it happens every day. Someone goes back and they find out it's back. You know, that's the term, it's back. And so even in these other areas, you know, that potential is always there. So you've really got to have a, um, a process in place um, to continuously heal or stay in a position or place of healing is what, the way I talk about it in the book. And so for me, um, initially... Um, it was really about building um, that spiritual relationship. And um, if you read the book, it's pretty clear on what my spiritual beliefs are. And I'm not really trying to impose those on others. Uh, in a general sense, you know, I would encourage people to um, to at least deal with their spiritual side. Um, I won't tell them, you know, what to go, where to go. Um, I, 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 you know, I struggle with... Um, you know, will I lose, uh, you know, an audience by, you know, really going there with, 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 my, with what, you know, with what I have done or who I cried out to. Um, but I, I, it's, it's my foundation. It is who I am, and, and it's been very successful for me. So in that arena, uh, just building a relationship, um, a prayer life, um, having a consistent um, Bible time, and really understanding you know, the affirmations and things of that nature that the Bible really does speak about of who I am. And then, you know, in, in um, just a practical sense, coming to grips with, and one of the questions I asked myself a lot was, you know, there's this myth that only women who are only girls or ladies, females with, who have an absentee father struggle with some of the things that I struggled with. And I had a father, and not only did I have a father in the home, I, I had a father who by, you know, most of the written standards was a very good father. Uh, but I really highlight, you know, where I think there was opportunity for for, um, for me to gain some learning and understanding about a relationship with, with men that maybe I wouldn't have um, sought after some of the things that I did and got into some of the relationships that I got into. So just kind of, you know, twofold thing. But again, I, I mentioned not to trade cancer for cancer, which is, you know, it's not about placing blame. It's all about healing, you know, um, to your point about most life and, and the beautiful things that you are doing to get people to that new place in life. Um, so, you you know, it's not about, but it's, it's at least examining what the causes are. I mean, they do it with our cancer, our breast cancer and other cancers every day. There's work being done to understand the cause. So I think that's the key is just understanding the cause and implementing, you know, things, pr practical tools, spiritual tools 
just implementing tools to help garner and support your healing process. Yeah, I um, I agree with you. Healing is a constant a constant process, and not only from a learning. And I'm, I tend to approach things kind of from an intellectual point of view a lot. Um, which I think um, helps me uh, adopt things quicker. Mm -hmm. uh, but that being said, um, without the spirit and the and the heart and the soul being right there in the middle of it, the healing doesn't uh, fully occur. And maybe many people operate like I do, um, where you know, kind of like at this point, everything is good, and <laughs> we have to look below. Mm -hmm. And uh, and connect the body um, and the and the brain and I won't say mind because to me mind is more of an all encompassing but the healing process definitely has to happen on all dimensions and it, it takes time and it and one has to give oneself time uh, to do that um, and I'm actually going to be covering the topic of rest in one of my uh, sessions coming up soon as well uh, because I think in today's society we have completely forgotten about the value of rest right. and, um, and when you go through a traumatic experience whether it be breast cancer or leaving a relationship that's not working um, you need to heal you need to heal as you're as you're working through that and and rest is a big component of that and it's harder for us to do that in this day and age I believe we don't give ourselves permission to rest um, and, and speaking of, of not resting, uh, I know that you told me that you were recently at a, um, a big uh, conference for survivors. Um, it's named Survivorville, and we will have the, the ladies who have started that on a future Ahead of the Curve series. Um, tell me about your experience at Survivorville and the opportunity that you had in, in speaking up there in front of um, a group of very engaged um, survivors. That experience was um, was an awesome time to come together with survivors of all cancers, and uh, really just a lot of time. I mean, it, it was a, a time of empowerment, a time of, of learning, a time of uh, pampering. So really, the total body, kind of to what you were alluding to earlier, the total body experience. Um, and before I even go into to that. When you were talking and you said you felt like the mind was all encompassing, you know this real this theme, um, and, and it's scriptural uh, that we are truly transformed. You know the things that you and I are doing, our purposes are really about transformation and uh, overcoming limiting beliefs and um, really just getting people to a healthy place in totality. Uh, I just believe that that transformation can only come. By the renewal of the mindset, it's just so important. Even about cancer, you know, I, I start the book off, I think, by saying that many believe that um, a cancer diagnosis is an immediate death sentence, and it's the furthest thing from the truth. And then, even this morning, I read that an oncologist um, recently shared that 70% of overcoming her belief, anyway, is that 70% of overcoming. Uh, you know, cancer is mental. That's huge, 70%. Wow. So, so just understanding that. But anyway, back to the conference, uh, the convention. It was a wonderful experience. And my, um, my real direct experience was a new part of this, this conference. It's gone on for several years. But this year was the inaugural um, event of what's called My Second Act. And it's uh, totally about speaking, giving survivors a voice. Um, the platform was 12 women. We each had a, roughly around five minutes. Most of us probably took a few more minutes um, to really tell our stories about our cancer journeys and really what we're doing on this side of our cancer journeys to impact other survivors and, in many cases, impact the world. I think the thing that came through as everyone spoke up and really shared their voice about their journey was what really became clear and became important on this side of, of their journey. Um, you know, the things that we had kind of really put at the forefront, including things that would cause us to not rest properly, 
uh, to strive for the highest positions in the corporate world and all of those things. Uh, I think that we all, that, that was probably the common thing no matter what the cancer was, was that we all saw that at the end of the day, you know, those things just really, they're important, but, you know, they're not at the top of, of our priority list. So giving survivors that voice and empowering other people to, to you know, dream. And uh, one of the things that I said was to empower survivors to see themselves as more of a remanufactured rather than damaged good. Um, you know, to understand it's almost like a second lease on life and whatever you choose to do, getting clear on those things that are most important to you and, um, and just going for it. So it was huge. It was a, a wonderful experience. And I know the intent is to take that second act, survivor stories, um, all over the world. And, you know, to your point about speaking out, um, it's just a movement that I think is going to change the way survivors be, view their experiences going forward. Yeah, I know um, several uh, people I've spoken to who've survived cancer and not just breast cancer, but other uh, cancers and other, and other kind of life um, threatening conditions talk about it as a gift and I know that for people who have not been through it that sounds rather odd and strange and a little bit twisted maybe um, I certainly do consider my experience um, not only a gift for me um, but it was an opportunity to um, enhance my relationships with my family members um, and uh, I've got a close family and a very loving family and I'm blessed for that um, but it is a rallying time and it's something that um, continues to keep people um, focused on the importance of living in every day and um, I don't think I'm going to get through this interview with a dry eye so <laughs> <laughs> it's okay um, so, uh, you know, just kind of reflecting on my own personal experience um, with you and, and with your friendship and, and with your courage uh, to talk about the things that we don't want to talk about when we talk about medical conditions. We don't want to talk about um, the other parts of our life that could have been uh, not only precipitating factors but enhancing factors to something going in the wrong direction. Um, and, and again, speaking out and speaking... Uh, truth and speaking your voice and being the voice of something that's important uh, to me is a very honorable thing to do, Duana. And um, your book, uh, Cancer Us, is a is an honorable, um, courageous journey that you are undertaking. And uh, I, I obviously will will tell people this as we go through this. But um, this this beautiful book, this wonderful book that you have uh, created out of your thoughts and your mind and and your journey um, is self-published and uh, no doubt um, your your message and your voice will be heard uh, far and wide and, um, and, and certainly personally I'm going to do what I can to uh, make sure that your message is out there because um, I couldn't have written the book that you wrote but I certainly would have wanted to because um, let me just uh, <laughs> It's okay. Um, because a lot of things that you say resonate with me and my experience, and it's very difficult uh, for an, a successful, uh, positive person to admit uh, some of the things that might have been uh, factors in in a, a disease. And um, yeah. wiping away again. Um, anyway, with all that being said, we're going to do a giveaway of this. Gosh darn awesome book, and um, and and Duana, uh, we're gonna feature you with our speaking theme, um, but we're also gonna re-promote and and readdress your message when we hit um, our Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which is coming up soon. Um, this interview and th this I'm gonna I'm gonna change my ahead of the curve interviews to my ahead of the curve conversations. Uh, because you have been so engaging with me today that this has been a, a real conversation and a real um, opening of a conversation that hopefully other folks will find to have um, inspiration and meaning and, and, and help them. I know your book will touch a lot of lives. Um, what, what, 
what kind of words might you be able to kind of wrap us up here with um, that talk about kind of your next life and how you've um, achieved your most life or how you're moving in that direction to to surround yourself with joy and happiness and, and the pleasures of life. Um, life is always hard, um, but most life is all about really trying to focus on having more gratitude and, and more joy and, and, and just a greater abundance of living and that experience of living uh, fully and, and most. Um, tell, me, tell me a little bit about uh, where, you're, where you're at now. So one of the things that I got really clear on, <clears throat> you know, um, as I started, you know, realizing that, uh, and I think this is sort of my motto, you know, that there's nothing greater than living your best life now. And, and of course, you know, then you have to go into what does that look like. And for each and every individual, that's that best is different. Um, for me, I became really clear that my my top passion, uh, my top uh, thing that I get up in the morning to do is to inspire others. And again, you know, so in line with, with your theme today, um, my voice, um, that people are recharged um, to, to get healthy in every area of their life. And so um, when I'm not uh, on the road speaking, which that's uh, picking up quite a bit, Mm -hmm. I am uh, performing workshops where I help other people get clear on what their passions are. I'm actually a certified facilitator of the New York Times bestseller, The Passion Test. And um, it's just uh, such a simple tool to really get people clear. Um, and so that is what I'm doing, either speaking um, or, or, or having workshops and just internally always utilizing what I'm encouraging others to do. Um, to kind of really go inside of myself and always kind of, you know, everything that we went through in the breast cancer journey, uh, the checkups, you know, we need to do checkups. We need to, um, you know, stay, um, stay in the present with our conditions, whatever they are. And, um, and then we need to ask ourselves, these are all titles of the chapter of the book. What, you know, what's your treatment plan? Have, you know, have some, know that you've got to do, do something because, in every area of our life, I'm convinced that you have a choice not to treat, but whether it's a week from now or 10 years from now, the result is death, whatever that is, whether it's relationship, death of passion, death of, of just whatever you know, you're in in your life. So we've got we've to assess that. We've got to garner the right support system. You know, we've got to understand that, that just breathing is a privilege and to just master every moment. And so... That, that is my goal, is to, to consider every area of my life and to constantly, uh, you know, assess so that I can stay in a place of healing. Um, and, and that's health, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Um, and I just want to encourage and be that light for others. Um, I, I just, I don't, I don't, I can't imagine life any other way. Well, that's terrific, um, and and you've certainly been that for me today personally. Um, I know you're going to be that for uh, the viewers of this conversation. Um, the Ahead of the Curve series. Uh, the whole point about it is to capture the inspiration of people who are making a difference in their world now, and who have uh, shifted uh, their world and are inspiring others to shift. And and Dewana, you're you're like you're like the perfect ahead of the curve. Uh, conversation and um, I didn't expect this conversation to touch me in, in such a way although I should have I should have thought about that <laughs> well I'm just glad to be a part um, of this of this conversation and this experience and um, it's what I it's what I do it's who I am I finally you know get it that at, at my very core is what I was uh, what I was put on this earth to do and the fact that I've been given you know that opportunity to still be here is what I'll do as long as I'm here. Thanks, Duana. Um, as I said, this has been a very uh, heartfelt conversation for me, and I really appreciate uh, what you've written and what you're, the fact that you were willing to share your experience is an unbelievable gift to the rest of us. And I'll, I'll, I'll one, one more time uh, show our, our audience your, your wonderful book. And Duana, tell us um, where we can get this book and uh, 
a little bit about its availability. Okay, you can um, you can obtain the book in several ways. Um, if you'd like an autographed copy, um, you can go to www.dawanasykes.com uh, forward slash products and obtain it via PayPal, and it will go out the same day if received before 5 p.m. Central Time. Uh, you also may, if you just want to obtain a copy, uh, you may go to Amazon.com. And in the future, um, there's some some local. If you're in the Memphis area, there's some local retailers, um, some smaller bookstores that already have it. A Servant's Heart. Um, but in the future, um, hopefully, um, it'll be in some of the larger chains, and we'll be able to talk about that when we get together again, which I know we will. <laughs> well, and and let's uh, let's heat up uh, both your website and Amazon.com with uh, with orders galore. There's certainly a thousands and thousands if not millions of people who would gain uh, some life lessons and some inspiration from reading your book. Hopefully we've touched many of those folks uh, today with our conversation. Um, we will talk to you again um, because maybe people want to have a conversation where I'm not uh, dripping tears over the conversation. <laughs> um, so I thank you for that. I thank you for touching me in a way that was unexpected today. Um, as, I, as I'm often reminded by people around me now, if I'm living the most life, I'm not afraid of my emotions, and I am it all hang out um, where it's appropriate to, to do so. So I really appreciate you uh, tugging at some very deep emotions inside of me. Uh, hopefully you've touched that for some other folks as well. And... Um, I just look so much forward to continuing to work with you and to continue to promote your message and, and, and you because you are a courage, courageous messenger and uh, it's my pleasure to have shared the stage with you last year at our, our 60 mile walk and I will also be posting some of those pictures. Um, I'm, I'm proud of, of that experience last year. Like I said earlier, it was my five year uh, cancer free um, anniversary last year and uh, you were there with me and who knew that the journey would take us to ahead of the curve conversations um, and uh, and your wonderful book and uh, I think everyone who uh, who knows you and who's gotten to know you uh, will certainly appreciate the story that you have to tell and the fact that you are telling it so thank you very much Dewana Sykes for joining us and uh, we appreciate all of your courage and wisdom and uh, let the message be sent out thank you very much well, thank you for having me, and I, too, want to applaud you uh, with Most Life and all that you're doing. Uh, I just think it's a tremendous work, um, just so many different areas um, of empowerment that Most Life, um, from all that I've been able to see through your uh, blogs and your website, just a beautiful thing, and I really encourage my, um, my team of uh, fans and supporters and followers to uh, really take a look at all that you are offering um, for that total package, that total um, um, healing and, and, and just life, that most life. So thank you for having me. Thank you. I appreciate you.